Next up for us, 1 p.m. Eastern, LA Raiders, 2 and 6, 1 and 3 on the road at Cincinnati Bengals, 3 and 5, 0 oh and 4 at home. Still have not got a victory at Paycor. A 66 Fahrenheit, there's a chance of showers. It should be kept an eye on. It could be nothing, as we know. Seven mile per hour winds. Let's get into the line history here for Raiders Bengals. We have the total at 46. It's juiced to the over at minus 113. This opened up at 44 and a half and climbed all the way up to 47 and a half. That's legit. Now it's at 46. It's still juiced to the over. We have a point and a half move towards the over. Let's get to the spread here for this one. We have the Bengals right now down to what I think is going to be a seven. The seven. So this opened at eight and a half at plus 101. It moved to seven and a half. And now that seven and a half is plus 107. So it is a seven at some books. Other books, I mean, if we're looking right now across the market space, uh, there are a couple books at seven. So it's definitely moving that direction. So it's going to be a seven here. Uh, if your book's not at a seven, I imagine it will be at a seven uh, by the time you wake up or, or tonight. Uh, let's go into the cash flow for this one. 39% of the tickets and 41% of the cash is on the Raiders. And on the total, we have 79% of tickets and 96% of cash on the over. Let's start with these Raiders. They come in off their fourth straight loss, 27-20 setback at home to the Chiefs, but they played much better, much better. And it's Minshew played much better after the debacle of the week prior, filling in for uh, O'Connell and looking horrif horrific. Their passing offense, 18th in the league, 209.1 yards per game. Their rushing offense is horrific. It's so bad. I mean, when we talk about the Cowboys and the Raiders, you're wondering why they're not winning games. Well, they can't run the ball. And if you can't run the ball, you don't give your 330-pound defensive end a chance to rest for a second. They're... Red zone offense, 15th in the league at 57.1%. Their third down offense, 26th, 33%. Their pass defense, 7th, 189.1 yards per game they allow through the air. Not bad. Rush defense, 19th at 129.9. Their red zone defense is 26th. It's bad. They allow touchdowns 62.1% of the time. And their third down defense is okay at 15th, allowing conversions 36.4% of the time. Raiders played well. Like I said, uh, they scored at least 20 points uh, for the first time uh since september 29th it was impressive uh you know uh, against the team that that we thought wanted to kind of we knew that mahomes wanted to beat them uh, so now they put up 20 points despite gaining just 228 total yards so let's not get too excited about this offense now gardner Minshew had a nice bounce back after the debacle 24 30 for 209 yards two touchdowns no interceptions he did lose a fumble a uh, brock bowers caught five for 58 and jacoby myers had missed two previous games with an ankle injury he's a big addition to the offense huge six catches for 52 yards and touchdown uh, the running game ranked second last in the league and you saw why. Uh, Alexander Madison ran 14 times for 15 yards. Ugh. I mean, they combined to run 21 times for 33 yards. Now they went 6 of 13 on third down and 2 of 4 in the red zone. But the defense couldn't stop the Chiefs on third down. There were a bunch of teams who had monster third down uh, numbers here this past week. The Chiefs were one of them, 12 of 16. That's how easy it was for them to convert on third down. Three of four in the red zone. Uh, the pass rush had another quiet game. I mean, it's too bad. You know, you put two on Max Crosby and don't worry about anybody else. Yeah. It allowed one sack. Or so they had one sack and three quarterback hits. Um, Trayvon Morig uh, had an interception for 12 yards. Their center, Andre James, was injured in the second half. He's listed as questionable to play this week. And Dylan Parham missed the second straight game due to a foot injury. Uh, Jordan Meredith is replacing him, but you want to have Parham out there. Then let's talk about the Bengals passing offense, seventh in the league, 235.5 yards per game, rushing offense, 28th, 89.8. Their red zone offense is fifth in the league. They score touchdowns 66.7% of the time. They're a good team offensively. Their third down offense, fifth, 45.9% of the time. So it's just basically the rushing offense. Uh, Zach Moss has not been nearly as good as they expected him to be. Uh, Chase Brown has been at times good. But together, I mean, they combined for 43 yards on 17 carries. You're not going to win football games when you run like that. You need to be able to move the ball on the ground. And their defense is bad, straight up bad. Their pass defense, 21st, 219.4 yards they allow. Their rush defense is 24th. They allow 139.3 yards per game. I mean, they, they're allowing right now 50 more yards than they're running for on the ground. Each and every game, that hurts you. Red zone defense, 27th, allowing 66.7%. So that almost negates your great red zone offense. And then your third down defense, 27th in the league at 
they're just bad. They're a bad defense. They're coming off a 37-17 loss at home to the Eagles. Joe Burrow was 26-37 for 234 yards, touchdown on a pick. Gasicki, led receiver with seven receptions for 43 yards. He did lose a fumble again. Uh, God, I remember distinctly uh, losing the survivor in week one when Gasicki uh, lost a fumble down, uh, moving towards the uh, goal line. Uh, the offense struggled. Jamar Chase, though, nine catches for 54 yards. Uh, offense only had 280 yards, but they had the best third down performance of any team this season. They went 10 of 13 on third down, but just one of three in the red zone. The Eagles put up 37 points on 6.7 yards per play against this beleaguered Bengals defense. Pass rush was nowhere to be found. Zero sacks, one quarterback hit. Eagles were 7 and 12 on third and fourth down, 3 of 5 in the red zone. And then they, they lose uh, offensive tackle Orlando Brown with the right injury, right knee injury in the first half. It's not as bad as they thought it was going to be. He's considered day-to-day. They were without T. Higgins, who sustained a quad injury in practice last week. He's considered day-to-day. So, you know, he's avoided a serious injury, but it's unclear if he'll be able to play here. Uh, And then without Higgins, it's Yoshivas is this number two receiver. And then you have Jermaine Burton. You have Trenton Irwin. They just can't do the job, man. They can't do the job. We saw that last week. So, you know, I'm expecting Higgins not to be in the lineup. We know, and this was a big part of us talking about the Bengals in the offseason, that Higgins did not want to be tagged. And he was tagged this year, and he wanted the call. He's pissed off. You think he's going to come back early from any injuries? No. Jamar Chase wanted the extension. They didn't give it to him. Uh, these guys, are, you know, you got to keep your star players happy. Now, you don't want to do it the way the Cowboys did it because now they're screwed, paying Dak way too much money for a very mediocre quarter play, quarterback play. But... I don't think T comes back and 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 I want the Bengals in this spot. I think that maybe it's a sell high spot on the Raiders, even though they just lost by seven points. I think the Bengals may be smash and grab, but studying them, I don't know how you could trust it and want to put money on them winning by margin. Take it away for us, Troy. Raiders, Bengals. And that's why your breakdown right there is exactly why I'm sitting in this chair right now. Because I fell in love with your ability to, to break these games down, just like you just did, man. That was phenomenal. Uh, I think you touched on the big – the biggest point is this team cannot run the football. If you can't run the football, if you're a one-dimensional offense, and I don't know if you can put the blame on the running backs. Look at this offensive line. They're worst in the league in run block win rate. They're worst in the league per PFF in run block uh, – their run block grade. And they also can't protect in the passing game. This offensive line is not good. What Joe Burrow has done with this offensive line and this and this lack of their ability to run the football has been truly impressive. Truly impressive. Even though with those frosty tips that I can't fucking stand watching them, um, what he's been, been doing has been truly impressive with what he has at his disposal. And on the other side, the Raiders, I'm not going to lie, like, this is probably the team I've watched the less, the, the least amount of snaps, the least amount of football, the least amount of film. Something about this team is just so unappealing to me. Both offense and defense are bottom five units in the NFL. Gardner Minshew is not entertaining to me. The only two players worth watching are, are Bowers and Crosby, probably. I mean, it's just a very uninspiring football team, so, a team that I really struggle to study. Um but laying this number with a team like the Bengals to me just makes no sense. Playing numbers and markets alone, like this is probably a bet on the Raiders, especially this line is taken in their favor. And honestly, historically, that's actually been a spot where it's it goes too far at the seven with a good team, good team that I currently have the Bengals middle game versus Kansas City. They're probably their Super Bowl. I don't know what to expect from that side of the football. I don't know what to expect from the Bengals. They clearly need T. Higgins in the lineup. They clearly need to be able to run the football, which they can't. This is a pass. This is a pass. I have no action. I'm not going to be betting this game. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, Brady saying Raiders uh, at the seven is a solid look. I get it, but uh, there's two things motivation-wise. Like you said, the Raiders just played in their Super Bowl, and the Bengals are 0-4 at Paycor. They have not won in front of their fans. They've looked terrible. So and this they, fits the profile of a team that they beat, like the Browns with Deshaun Watson, the Giants, and then the Panthers. Like the Raiders, all oh, they they're fitting right in there, dude. Yeah, I'm um uh, I I can't I can't move on it here. I I mean I would like to sit here and say, oh, you know, okay, so I, I don't think that 
I can take the Bengals at this price and I don't want the Raiders. So then maybe, you know, we look for the total here. Maybe we look at an over spot here because I think that the Cincinnati Bengals defense is terrible. I, I see that it's gone up from 44 and a half to 46. But these are two one-dimensional offenses. Are you telling me that, that you can't put up a game plan? Now, maybe the Raiders don't have a secondary that can slow down the Bengals without T. Higgins, but I don't find that possible. So I, 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 I'm i off the spot. Londo on the Bengals. Birdie's going to take the Raiders a plus seven and a half. And, yeah, I can't do it. I can't do it, and uh, it doesn't appeal to me. Uh, Londo giving us a final score, 26-16. Bengals win. Uh, and Troy Torrance says, if the Bengals make the playoffs, they'll do a bankroll blitz with frosted tips in the divisional round. No, wait, Jimmy. That's the one That's the one comment I make you read. That's the one? To just expose me? Like, it's like, how fast can you read even? Like, how'd you even read that that fast to know to read that aloud? <laughs> let's go. All right, let's move on to the next spot on the board. 